We are here due to a real shortage of alternative fuel in Malawi. I'm fetching some firewood so that I can kill it home to make fire. So about six years ago, we started looking at alternatives. Eucalyptus trees, pine trees, clones that were fast growing. Everything took too long to, to grow. And uh, we came across this giant tropical bamboo from Indonesia. And with our climate here in Malawi, we've experienced that it, the growth is phenomenal. Bamboo is such a simple solution, and you're allowing the natural forest then to repopulate. If we use something like bamboo as an alternative to firewood, because it burns better, and the primary drivers of deforestation are in your urban and peri-urban areas, and they're all using charcoal. Mm -hmm. So we're saying, how can we address that? So something like bamboo is an immediate solution, an alternative to that. There's still three million households in Malawi that need to cook food three times a day. And the fuel that they are harvesting currently is, is not sustainable. Most of the farmers do not put in measures to control or to address issues to do with uh, runoff or soil, soil oil. It has contributed greatly to deforestation and the poor farming systems in Malawi. Farmers know the problem. They recognize that there is a problem. And what they don't want is now how do they address that problem. This can be that alternative. Whether it's charcoal, whether it's a firewood, or whether it's processed into, into timber. These trees that you see around you here are nine years old, and we can do nothing with them. So if I was a farmer, and this is all that I had around my house, I would get one harvest and be back to square one. So how can you come from that direction of actually empowering them? And from a farming perspective, when we are implementing the designs and promoting bamboo and promoting swales and promoting all of the different technologies, wetland management, watershed management, we're also saying, like Grant said earlier, you can grow in between. It doesn't take away from anything. It actually promotes better growth, promotes better land and water management, so that your crops will not be washed away and that your harvest will be better. For relying on the smallholder farmers to implement, what strength do they have? to bring to the table. Getting them to understand the value of what you have to offer, the knowledge or your skills and your experience, and then how can that translate with the work we do on our farms, uh, with the nature protecting the forest. What we're yeah. promoting is 10 bamboo per household to be able to meet the fuel needs. And you know, just around a home, they have so much gray water. Mm. So you can use that gray water to water your bamboo if water is an issue. So those are the kinds of directions we're coming from that not to take away from productivity, but to add value to it. To be able to grow something that can replace timber in seven years and last for a hundred years and only costs around $1.50 is, is a fair deal. Because we are working with partners and directly with community farmers and members on the ground and promoting sustainable solutions that are long-term. We feel that having all of those partners working together allows for a more sustainable way to actually promote the technology as bamboo, but also the other land management techniques. This is something that you, know, you can see daily. I can see it, I can monitor progress on an annual basis. And if we can replicate that across the country, I do believe that uh, there can be a change. I really do.